Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And now Bethlehem and the land of Judah are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. The Bible tells us that wise men came from the east following the star that guided them. The star lit their way. Without its light, they wouldn't have been able to make their journey. They never would have found the Christ. Do you have a light to light your way? Or is your way full of darkness? Have you found the Christ? Or is he out there somewhere in your world of darkness? Psalms 119, 105 tells us that Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If we look to God's word, it will light our way. It will lead us to Christ. Well, it's Christmas again. So many events packed in such a small period of time. Songs we only sing at this time of year. Presents to be bought. Decorations to put up. So much to do in so little time. What do you think about Christmas? Do you enjoy the season? Or are you secretly glad when it's over? Is there any way to find out what Christmas means? Maybe you've been, you've lost your way, or rather never ever found it. We read in the Bible that the wise men followed the star. The star guided them to the Christ child. Let me assure you that there is always a light to guide us. If you look for it, it will be there. Let me for a few minutes light your way with some verses from God's Word about this event we call Christmas. If you were to take a vote among most people about what Christmas means, they would overwhelmingly say presents. It's about gifts. And in a way, they're right. But it's not gifts, plural. It's gift, singular, a gift, a free gift. Christmas is about a free gift. It's not about a gift we give, it's about a gift we receive. The last part of Romans chapter 6, verse 23 tells us that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That holy night so long ago was when our story begins. A man named Joseph and his wife named Mary, both descendants of King David, arrive in Bethlehem, the city of David. Mary's pregnant, soon to deliver. She's carrying not Joseph's son, but the Son of God. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14 tells us that a virgin would conceive and bear a son, God's son. Now, her conception was not like yours or mine. There was nothing shameful or sinful or wrong about what took place. God the Son needed to take on human flesh before he could make available for us this free gift of eternal life. In Luke chapter 1, verse 35, the angel Gabriel tells or explains to Mary what will take place. The power of the highest will overshadow thee, he says. Why would God the Son need to become human, or rather God and man? Why? What was his purpose? The Almighty becoming mortal. What great need was there that would cause such drastic measures? We find our answer in the word love. John 3.16 tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves his sinful creation, and the only solution for man's sinful condition was Christ. God the Father would have to take on flesh, 
work of God the Son, or Jesus Christ as we know him, and pay the debt that mankind owed. God's word had decreed that the debt of sin could only be paid for by death. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 says the wages of sin is death. Man can try to pay for his sin himself, but this payment will take an eternity, an eternity separated from God to accomplish. In reality, it's an unending debt, an eternal payment. Not much to look forward to, is it? But God had a way out for you and I, and his way out for us is his son, Jesus the Christ. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of the Virgin Mary, the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies. He lived on the earth for 33 years. Then he was crucified on Calvary's cross. His life and death were in God's plan for our redemption. On Calvary's cross, God the Father put on God the Son the sins of mankind, all the sins of mankind, from the beginning of creation till the end of time. Christ bore our sins. Each individual's past and present and future sins was paid for that day. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 tells us that God made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be made sin for us. Well, the last thing Jesus said on the cross was, it's finished. The payment had been made. The Father was satisfied with the Son's payment. And then he died. He was raised three days later, further proving the payment for sin had been accepted. God the Father is now in the position where he can offer to us the free gift of eternal life. John chapter 6, verse 47 tells us, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Do you believe that Jesus paid for all your sins, your past sins, your present, your future sins? If you do, according to God's holy word, you have eternal life. You may doubt or wonder, how do I know I believe? Well, ask yourself this question. Am I going to heaven? If I die today, would heaven be my home? Now remember those who have eternal life go to heaven. If your answer is yes, I'm going to heaven when I die, you got it. Because believers have eternal life. But if you're not sure of where you would go when you, well then you need to listen to the tape again. And keep listening until it becomes clear to you that believers in Christ have eternal life. If you have eternal life, you're a believer. Enjoy the greatest Christmas gift ever given, eternal life. Have a blessed Merry Christmas.